All right, I'm uh, here with uh, Jim Whitting, who uh, we've talked many times. Uh, you are the creative of Margo Intergalactic uh, Trash Collector. Here we go. Yes, yes, I am. There we go. <laughs> you got the button, you got the stickers. Dark Arts uh, Kickstarter. Dark Arts. Dark Arts was a Kickstarter, yes. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably missing anything. Anything else that you, you've uh, done? Well, a uh, Kickstarter, I haven't done the Infinite Punishment, but I've been publishing uh, books through Fanico in the comic book shops. Um, the Margo books were re-released into uh, comic book shops, and uh, I put out uh, Marcellus Trom's Infinite Punishment. Um, yeah. And I am also uh, sort of the art director for Fanico. So any of the books that they put out, I've had a hand in, whether it's lettering, layout, uh, some coloring here and there, art direction, things like that. So keeping myself pretty busy. Although now with the uh, comic distribution chain uh, down, things are at a lull. So a little bit of a chance to catch up and launch the Kickstarter that I'm working on. Speaking of which, that's why uh, we, uh, I, you know, I'm interviewing you today. Can you, uh, first off, you know, tell us what the Kickstarter is, what, you know, uh, mm -hmm. tell us the premise of it and all that. Sure. Um, well, if you're familiar with the um, example of the Infinite Punishment book, I was working with uh, Marcelo Trom, and uh, we were putting out his book that... Um, his series, so we did a three-issue series, and unfortunately he passed away in the middle of, the, at, right after doing the second issue, and he had finished um, doing the third issue, but it hadn't been inked, uh, the third issue. So we put that out with um, his finished uh, pencils. It, it wasn't inked, so I finished the writing and the lettering, and we managed to get that out, and I was working with his widow, Juliana, and... Um, she had expressed a desire to get some of his work out in uh, book form. So she went through his art and sent me quite a bit of his art. And so we put together this Kickstarter called Bad Girls, The Art of Marcelo Trom. So we collect a lot of his commissions, um, paintings, drawings, some of his earlier drawings, uh, character sketches for the comic series, um, and a whole bunch of stuff that we, we managed to put together. No, so no. Mm -hmm. You were at the uh, Albany Con. You, I think you mentioned that you were in the process of, you know, planning something, you know, in his honor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is pretty much this is pretty much it. Also, you know, we're kickstarting for the amount to cover the printing, but anything that I make over printing will go towards his family. I mean, he has a five-year-old son, uh, Mark Mathis, and. Uh, his wife, Giuliani, they're over in Brazil, Juliana, they're over in Brazil. And, um, you know, her main thing is she wants his legacy to live on. So I, you know, I collaborated with him. I worked with him. He was a good friend. So for me, it's, it's a labor of love uh, trying to get this stuff out there. Now, I think, I don't know if we've talked about it before, but how did you uh, meet up with Marcelo initially? On Facebook. Uh, I liked some of his art, and I asked him to do a pinup for one of the Margot books. In the Margot books, I will also uh, ask artists to do pinups for the backup features. And uh, we hit it off right away. He did a, did a bunch of stuff for me. He also did a uh, short story, uh, Attack of the Space Vampire, which was going to be on the Diamond Order form that just never came out. <laughs> so uh, if they get back online, that'll be up. But... Um, so we work, we collaborate on some stories and originally his infinite punishment series was a Kickstarter that, um, he, he, there was a falling out between him and the publisher. So he approached me to publish the series for him, try to get it out. And so we, we did that. And so this is kind of the follow up. As a matter of fact, I've had a lot of questions online about uh, people who supported that particular Kickstarter and, uh, didn't get anything. And I had to explain that I wasn't involved in it. But we are giving away PDFs of the books to people who uh, didn't get anything and, or, and want something. So if they contact me, I'll certainly give them digital editions of the books. So what was it about his art style that kind of, you know, drew you towards him? 
Well, he has a very cartoony style, but he's also a big fan of 40s Tex Avery, uh, early Disney stuff. So a lot of his style steeped in uh, 40s cartoons. And so that's that style really attracted me. Plus, he's good. He's you know, he's good with uh, female form, which I admire. But he also he just has a very distinct style and it's very easy to recognize his style right off the bat. Um, you know, he's got a, he had several series he was developing and we were eventually going to shoot off the uh, Infinite Punishment into a Lilla series. I had commissioned logos and stuff. So we were going to start that right before he passed away. As a matter of fact, I was at Baltimore when he passed away. <laughs> I got the news when I was at the sitting at my table in Baltimore drawing and I had just gotten the second issue and and uh, I was selling that at Baltimore. And uh, yeah, that was sad. So the series did well. The second issue sold out. And um, so, you know, we're just trying to keep his legacy going. I mean, he gave me a ton of art. I have tons and tons of stuff. He was very generous with sending me stuff all the time. Uh, you know, I'd give him an idea and 12 hours later, he'd come back with a finished sketch, you know. And uh, <laughs> here, here's the finished work. And uh, he was amazing. So, um Tell me a little bit about, you know, the what you have for people that uh, support. What, what are the, you know, like the the, uh, mm -hmm. the levels of the pledge? It's the pledge levels and what do people get? Right. Well, the pledge levels are basically there is a soft cover for about uh, $20. Uh, U.S. would include postage. And there's a hard cover for uh, $49, which would include postage. So the hard cover has a different cover. Um, there also is um, rewards such as uh, back issues of the Infinite Punishment series that are available if, as add-ons onto the reward levels. There's a uh, prints of stuff that he's done. One of the things that I did was um, I've worked with a colorist uh, on his work before named Thiago Brando, who has been coloring some of the black and white art for this book. So we could present a lot of it in color. So we're also doing a set of uh, color prints. There's four demonesses that are uh, represented in the in the color prints that uh, Margot drew that were late. Uh, Mar uh, Marcelo drew that we're going to later be introduced into the series. So we're offering those up as prints. And uh, I think the first 48 hours we have a custom print that's not available after 48 hours. And then in the regular Kickstarter, there's a set of three demoness prints that come with the series. So we're offering up, I've got a back stock of books. I've got like 50 copies of the alternate covers that were done. So we're offering up those as limited 50 only. Um, the, this first issue, I think we've got a limited amount of 150. So we're offering those up and just to hopefully get them out to his fans and, and move them along to people who want them. So... Basically, let me see if I understand this. You you have all the material. You just need the funding to get you know it published yeah. and right. I just need the funding. The prices I've got are about five thousand dollars to publish the book in both editions. Um, so basically, the Kickstarter is for five thousand. That'll cover the printing cost and anything that goes over that. Um, I'm sending to his wife and son. Um, I probably will offer the book later in uh, stores if, if the system is back up and operating and that would be all money that would go to them also. So any way that I can raise some money and send over to them. I, I have been sending some on my own for using his art and different things. Every time I use a piece of art, I send his wife some money. Um, and so I've been keeping pretty close touch with them and she managed to get uh, a good chunk of his portfolio uh, scanned and, and sent over to me. So We've got plenty of material, and uh, I've got more more material from him than I could possibly ever use. <laughs> so we're just uh, we're just trying to get you know his stuff out while we still can, and you know, kind of while he's still fresh in people's memories, you know. So is this, how does this different one different from many of the other Kickstarters you ran run have ran? I know that. You know, I've talked to a couple people who are planning to do Kickstarters, but have mm -hmm. delayed them, you know, given the, you know, curtain situations as some people. Um, 
Well, I thought I, I thought about that, and uh, I was on the fence, and I had originally planned for April 1st, but I've been watching the Kickstarter numbers, and they've been holding up pretty good. And so I'm hopeful that with people home, they're still are, and they seem to still be ordering books uh, through whatever means possible. Um, I know that the Fanico website that I, I work on has been uh, selling a lot of digital books since mm-hmm. the stores are closed. And I've been, I have a few friends who ran Kickstarters just as the, as this was beginning to take, pick up pace and their Kickstarters seem to be fine. So my hope is that with people home, they're still ordering and that, you know, we'll, we'll get to the goal. If not, you know, I'll postpone it and we'll, we'll, we'll try to redo it later. But this um, particular, I haven't really done an art book before. The Dark Arts was kind of an art book. It was more of a portfolio in a magazine format. This one will be uh, square bound, 68 pages, all color. Um, and um, uh, probably will be a matte finish. Uh, the Dark Arts book had some of Marcello's work in it. Um, see if I can find some here. Well, anyway, some that's... Uh, <laughs> Something that's appropriate to show to your viewers, anyway. He does, he does some, uh, 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 you know, some cheesecake stuff. So, but mm-hmm. um, again, it, it's in the book format, and um, unlike dark arts. Well, I'm just kind of I have the your Kickstarter page uh, pulled up here, and mm-hmm. you're you have 35 backers right now, and over a fifth of the way there. So yeah, we're we're doing pretty good. Um, I launched last night at midnight. Uh, one of the reasons I did that is because a lot of the overseas people are on overnight. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of that stuff go out overnight. And when I woke up, there were, uh, um, the original art piece, uh, the Vampirella art piece had sold. Uh, the cover hasn't sold, but you know, we may put up another original piece. His wife is supplying the original art, uh, for whatever's needed for the Kickstarter. And, um, so we had a bunch of orders from overseas, Germany, uh, Great Britain, a few other places. And then today, I uh, really started to push into the domestic market a little bit with emails and things like that to uh, former backers. And, you know, so there's a whole strategy in place. It's been a couple of years since I've done a Kickstarter. I ran into some problems with the uh, dark arts kickstarting where uh, the printer took my money and disappeared. And so I had to refinance the whole book. So uh, it's kind of getting my feet back in the uh, water and back up on the horse. And so, um, are you working on anything else that you can talk about, or you know, besides the Kickstarter? Besides any, are you planning on any more of Margot? Or I am working on uh, probably four other books right now. I'm working on a new Margot series that's going to be three issues. I've got the uh, first two issues uh, laid out. I am also working on a um, a book that's going to be something a little different. It's in the horror vein. Um, back in the early 70s, I did a uh, a book called Lady Dracula that was sort of uh, sort of a spin fun type of uh, thing that was done in sort of the varied when there was that whole push of adult books back in the early 90s and so what i'm doing is i'm revamping the whole thing to introduce it to a mainstream audience and uh so i've got the first issue of that uh, broke down and ready to start uh lettering uh, i'm also working on a, a series that um i laid out uh for, with raymond lowell called uh Mansudo island monster island uh, so he's working on that. And then I'm uh, working on some short stories with uh, Matt Belskis, who's who's uh, sort of doing some stuff that uh, I've laid out for him to do, too. So I've got my finger in a lot of stuff. Keep him busy. Um, Keep him busy. Well, I mean, if there's, you know, nothing, you know, else you'd like to that I may have missed, um, you know, I'll let you go. But, you well, know, I, maybe... Oh, yeah. See you maybe around at uh, Free Comic Book Day, or hopefully, you know, at the con in June if they eventually if they have it. Well, as far as I know, the Free Comic Book Day has been canceled, right? It has. 
Yeah, Diamond canceled it. Oh, okay. So there's no free comic book day. So the earliest I could get out there is June. I'm hoping by that point the cons will be back up and running. Um, I am planning on doing Baltimore. Um, I applied to do New York, but they often don't accept my application. So we'll see. It's an effort and brutality, but I'll give it a try anyway. If not, I'll just go walk the floor as I usually do. Also, uh, Artist Alley is being used as the hospital right now, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I can imagine that you're going to see a lot of cons with gloves now and uh, keep back. And, you know, so I think it's going to change a lot. Um, I'm curious to see what happens with distribution now that uh, Diamond is down. And they also announced they're not paying any vendors anymore yesterday. Yeah. Um, fortunately, I had a bunch of, I had a bunch of books that were in and... Um, they've all i've gotten paid and they're all done and so i don't have anything in the pipeline right now that got stuck so okay well uh wish you best of luck uh with your yeah. kickstarter and we'll definitely keep on you know promoting it as as um as it goes on and you know if you I ever appreciate need, it you're more than welcome to come back on and you know push some more or talk you know we can talk just about anything uh -huh. I have other books I've done, but I don't have them right here. But I've also been working with Hanako on, um, we revamped Deep Red, which is a splatter zine, uh, into a color book format, which is kind of fun because my roots are in horror. And um, so I've gotten to do some writing for that and do the design work on that. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Chaz Bound's Deep Red from the uh, 70s. That's been revamped. And I also did the... Uh, Monster Art of Basil Gogos, uh, which came out uh, last year. So we're looking at, uh, we're, the pr first print run is almost out. We're looking at a second print run, and we might do some modifications, which might be fun. We're kind of talking to the Logosi estate about uh, some cover revisions and things, which could be fun to do. So, All right. Well, uh, again, it was nice, great to talk to you and, you know, catch up. It's been a while. Um, uh -huh. But, uh, you know, I'll try to get this up this evening and, you mm -hmm. know, include a link to the site and, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I can something on the, in the Indie Wire. I, you know, I, I started that uh, for people who, you know, they have Kickstarters and other things to promote because a lot of these sites, they, they don't want you promoting your stuff. So um, it seems to be pretty successful and doing pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with that. And, and I'm glad you caught me before I did my self haircut. I've been looking online <laughs> how to cut my own hair and how not to cut my own hair. <laughs> well, I had this before, and I'm, you know, uh -huh. I was just about to go to the barber. Not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, stay well, safe, stay healthy. <laughs> you too, Chad. Thanks for thanks for having me on, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Yeah, definitely. All, All right. right. Stay safe. Bye bye.